Hello everybody, David here. I am going to show you how to take a screenshot with transparency on PCs running Windows Vista and later. I mean, you can do it on earlier versions, but they didn't really have transparency in the UI, so that wouldn't make any sense. To show you what I mean by transparency, I have the calculator open right here. If I move it in front of this rock, you can see that the orange color kind of shows through if you look really closely. And if I move it over here in front of the sky, it turns blue. And if I move it in front of a cloud, it becomes white. If I do it faster, it kind of becomes more pronounced. Do you see that? In Groove Music, it's a little more pronounced. In this hamburger menu on the left, if I move it over here, you can really see that rock come through. Ah, yeah, you see how it's orange here and blue over there? Yeah, there is transparency in Windows 10. And in Windows 7 and Windows Vista, it was in the title bar. Unfortunately, Windows 8 kind of just has a drop shadow and that's it. This is what the end result looks like. If I turn the background off here, you can see that the checkerboard pattern shines through right here. You see? With the background? Without the background. There are tools that will do this for you automatically. One that I've used before is called Shoddy. I'll put a link in the description. However, if you don't have this tool, you can do essentially what this does in an image editing program. In this case, I am using the GIMP 2.8. By the way, I am assuming that you already know how to use the print screen key on your PC to take regular screenshots. And I am assuming that you have basic knowledge on how to use an image editing program like the GIMP or Adobe Photoshop. The Wikipedia page for alpha compositing has a formula right here which tells you how the source image, which is your foreground, the calculator in our case, is combined with the destination image, which is the background. This out right here refers to the composite image, which is what you see on your screen. I am not going to get into detail on how all of this works, but essentially you take this formula and do a bunch of algebra with it. I wrote some Python code that finds the original color of a single pixel. If you want to study the algebra, pause the video now. The image editor will be doing this math. Got it? I am moving on now. We actually need to take two screenshots, one over a white background and one over a black background. You can see I have an image here with a solid white layer and then a solid black layer. I'm going to position the calculator so that it's within this white area. And you want to make sure that there's plenty of wiggle room on the outsides of your subject because that will make things easier in a few moments. I'm going to take a screenshot over the white background by pressing the print screen key on my keyboard. I can now paste it into the GIMP as a new image. Next, I'm going to take a screenshot over the black background, once again with print screen. And you don't want to move your calculator or your subject between these two screenshots. If you do move them, you will have to line them back up later, and that's just creating more work for yourself. So I'm going to choose Edit, Paste As, and I'll paste it as a new layer this time. You can see the only difference between these two images is the white and black background. Now is a good time to crop your image. I'll do that with the Crop tool right here. Because I want to get the drop shadow of the window into the screenshot, I'm going to use this white layer to do the cropping. Just like that. And a quick way to get rid of the excess white area is to choose Image, Auto Crop Image. And now, look at that. The next thing that you need to do is add a layer of solid white. You can see I changed the names of the layers over here. I'm going to click on New Layer, and it's going to be filled with white. You want to make sure that the layer fill type is set to white. Hit OK. And we just need to put this white layer on the very bottom. The white image 
or the image over the white background should be next, and then on the very top should be the image over the black background. Next, I just need to set the image over the white background to subtraction mode, which I can do right here. And don't worry about how it's looking, it'll all come out in the end. Next, I set the black background to addition mode. Where is it? Where is it? There it is. Now, what you see on your screen here is called a mask. The brighter areas correspond to areas that were less transparent, and darker areas correspond to areas that were more transparent. If I bring the calculator back up, right, you can see that the keys are less transparent than the number display, and certainly are more transparent than outside the window. And that's reflected here, where it's black on the outside, and the brightest where the numbers are. Okay, what we want to do now is take what we're seeing here, the mask, and capture it in its own layer. If you're using the GIMP 2.8 or later, you can take these three layers and put them inside a layer group. But if you're not using 2.8 or later, just go to Layer and choose New from Visible. I don't need this white layer anymore and I don't need the image over white anymore. So now I'll just set this black layer back to normal and I'm gonna set this layer, the layer that we just created, to divide mode and watch what happens. There, look at that. What you are seeing are the original colors of the image. I wanna capture these colors in a new layer. So I'm going to go to layer, new from visible again. And now these other layers can be hidden. By the way, the GIMP documentation actually says that the divide layer isn't doing a perfectly or mathematically proper division operation, but it's close enough for our purposes. The last thing that we need to do is finalize the transparency. To do that, I'm going to select the mask layer. By the way, you can see I've renamed these layers. I'm going to choose copy. And now I want to create a layer mask on the colors layer. So I'm just going to right click and choose add a layer mask. And whichever initialization option you choose here doesn't really matter. I'll just leave it set to white. I'll set add. Next, paste an anchor. And there it is. We are done. It is finished. That finalizes the transparency. By the way, if you do want to add a background into the image, you will need to kind of blur it a little bit. Uh, sort of like what I'm going to do right here. Just go to filters and blur it. Maybe 300 pixels or so to make it look correct and fully mimic uh, the Windows desktop composition. But Aside from that, we are completely done. Thank you all for watching. Peace.